The title of the master's release today is How to Become a Resilient Aquarian Family. And this is beloved St. Germain and Portia, and they gave me this teaching yesterday, so I'll be sharing it with you. In the Aquarian family, parents model as much as possible how God, as father and as mother, love their children, their entire family. All of their children are recognized as sons and daughters of God made in the image and likeness of the Father-Mother God. And they as representatives of the Father-Mother God, Alpha and Omega, stand for their families and their children in the center of that circle of a little community of light that the family is. Love is at the center of life, at the center of our own beings, and at the center of loving and resilient families. Love is the guiding light, virtue, and divine force or power that allows the family to fulfill its purpose and to be resilient in the process. Holy prayer seals love within a tangible aura or flow field that in turn nourishes and nurtures and protects the souls of each family member and the oversoul of the family. Just as each soul has a guardian angel, so each family has a guardian angel or spirit assigned to overshine that unit, that family, as sacred, truly a sacred unit of light. Each family is a circle, or as the natives often said, a hoop, in which each person is a co-equal. Each person is a co-equal. So although parents beget their children and are charged with providing for and protecting and nurturing and maintaining the family culture. Each child is a co-equal in the eyes of heaven and integral to the fulfillment of the divine plan of the family. With this understanding, it somewhat spiritually levels the playing field of all interactions so that every individual is honored for the intrinsic God identity that they represent, who they truly are. Sometimes the children may actually be older souls than the parents, and the parents can learn a lot from their children. So when we have this respect, this honoring of each one as co-equal, then there is equanimity which is a divine equality, recognizing the God within each one. Each family has a divine plan created through the collaboration of each family member in the planning process before incarnating physically upon earth. This divine plan is a blueprint of how the family will coexist in harmony, work together, and meet the challenges that it naturally will experience. 
within the karma and the dharma that is being played out, often for the resolution of past life conflicts, yet also for the benefit of the earth and all evolutions through the talents and gifts and mastery that each individual within that family brings to the table, to the equation of life where they live, to their greater community. As part of this divine blueprint of the melding of soul characteristics through both the physical genetics and the spiritual DNA of all members, there is the result of an interesting dynamic. The guardian angel of the family highlights the positive traits that are passed on generation to generation while also, as best as possible in accord with cosmic law, mitigating the negative traits, lessening them, or at least kind of the opposite of highlighting. It's kind of low-lighting them. And this can occur when there is the energy of forgiveness and mercy within the family because that is the impetus by which the guardian angel can facilitate this process. So the more loving and forgiving and understanding we are with one another in the family dynamic and in all the relationships that are still evolving because they didn't just leave off in another lifetime, they're being experienced now, there is the opportunity for this sacred dynamic of resolution and that really happens through loving, understanding, forgiveness and being merciful one to the other. When a family prays together, a sacred matrix is established that allows for the highest good to manifest through divine intervention yielding great results that can neutralize the most toxic of past records that at times could erupt into contentious arguments, misunderstandings, and occasionally even physical harm or abuse. God forbid. So prayer is the antidote to virtually every problem or issue that may arise and when family members hold hands or they pray together in a true spirit of cooperative and collaborative union, the angels do step in and allow there to be this magical, mystical, and even miraculous intervention from the divine world that yields great results. In each one's life, and in the collective life of the family. Radical forgiveness is a must for the highest level of resiliency to manifest within the family. Radical forgiveness is a must for the highest level of resiliency to manifest within the family. We just finished the Kuan Yin Rosary with the Ho'oponopono prayer and song. One example of radical forgiveness, which is a divine science. It is mysterious, magical, and miraculous. When you truly experience it in the depths of your soul, when you choose to resolve your issues with others in your family and see the highest for each one manifesting, holding that immaculate concept, even though you're very aware of all the dynamics that have been at play in the past, you're aware of everyone's idiosyncrasies, including yourself, and you choose the higher walk with God and the higher road to unity, oneness, through this resolution process of letting go and letting God through radical forgiveness. 
The guardian angel of the family may be called upon to safeguard each person in the smaller family unit as well as the greater extended family unit that may include numerous generations and relatives. So we have our smaller family unit of our parents, ourselves, our siblings. Then we have the extended family that may include grandparents, grandchildren if you're old enough, nephews, nieces, cousins, and uncles, aunts. A lot of interaction can occur, especially in larger families like what I grew up in and Raymond grew up with. Nine, ten children and parents. So there's the dirty dozen occasionally, and hopefully it'll be the clean dozen. Resiliency is established through each family member trying to understand each other family member. Honestly, patiently abiding to develop listening skills as well as other talents that will provide an impetus of light and an example for others to follow. Younger siblings often mimic the older ones. So the elder children must take great care in setting a positive example, preferably even being servant leaders within their family. How often have we heard of larger families where the elder children took care of the younger ones, babysat them, even changed their diapers, did help them with their homework, whatever it was? Very important. And sometimes in the dynamics, the elder children almost become like parents unto their children, especially if one of the parents or both have passed or are not able to care for their children. Positive discussions at mealtime, celebrating victories, practicing the ritual of appreciation like we do in our Heart Center community, and allowing time for each child to share and shine forth their light is important to build a magnanimous family and a magnanimous family culture centered in God and blessed by the Holy Spirit. This is such an important sentence. I'd like to reread it. Positive discussions at mealtime, celebrating victories, practicing the ritual of appreciation like we do in our Heart Center, and allowing time for each child to share and to shine forth his or her light is important to build a magnanimous family culture centered in God and blessed by the Holy Spirit. The best games and activities are both educational and fun. Even while gently challenging children as well as adults to stretch their wings and to use their inner creative talents and gifts. We can play games and have fun, yet when they're educational and there's some learning involved, I believe it is more beneficial to the souls of each one. Inspiring movies and videos that engender heroic qualities and model these are also essential in building character and honoring those who have helped humanity to evolve to be ever closer to God. Exercise and movement, including dance and music, is extremely important to help children balance their four lower bodies and develop strong bodies, sound minds, and radiant hearts. When activities involve everyone, from the least to the greatest, in age and ability, Honor, honesty, and reverence become standards that in turn nurture the family, culture, and spirit. If someone feels left out, then there's a fracturing of the family. And so involving everyone in some way, even if they are not fully schooled in every aspect of the family culture, yet if they're very young, is still important. Making everyone to feel part of the whole is crucial. Each family can develop a mission and vision that will serve them for an entire generation and more 
and allow each member to pass on their highest gifts to the families that they will in turn co-create when their time comes and they are old enough. And when you model this high ideal by developing a mission and vision, pass that on to your children, they will feel the integrity of it, the importance of it, and they in turn hopefully and their families will do likewise and then pass from generation to generation, this high ideal will bring forth great, great blessings to the greater community. As part of this process, consider what unique traits your family has that sets it apart from others. Not that you're trying to highlight divisiveness or differences. It's just that each family is unique and wonderful. Although parents can lead this process, they may be surprised to hear the wisdom that even the youngest child may speak. For often these little ones will attune to the deepest needs and requirements of all to maintain a positive culture so all may experience their highest self with all of its graces and divine essences. How many of us have a family mission and vision that's very well defined, laid out, maybe even on paper or on a chart or with pictures and goals and ideals and victories that we look forward to completing. If there's one thing from this heart stream that many of you could consider implementing, it would be this, to really either develop it if you've never done so or hone it and adjust it and improve it based on where you are now as a family. Even if your children are grown, you can do this. Because the family mission and vision can extend to numerous generations. So maybe when your families come together at Thanksgiving or Easter or Christmas or at birthday parties or celebrations or graduations, see if you can set aside time to actually bring up this subject and allow people to give their input. Maybe the magic of that will help to actually resolve any unresolved issues and bring greater joy and a greater longevity to the family experience unto all. When families of like mind, heart, and soul come together in spiritual communities, the wider interaction of both adults and children together will also yield great results when families first consecrate their time together for a greater purpose, possibly even serving others in the local or extended community in need. Service projects establish an important example for all to work toward civic, national, and even international and planetary service all of which help to balance group karma on a grand scale. So we have group karma based on our past lives where maybe within families or communities or nations, we engaged in different situations, wars, whatever. And sometimes that karma has to be paid off by interacting with these greater groups of people and co-creating something beautiful and divine rather than unholy and impure. When grandparents and other elders are present, they should always be honored to share their wisdom and inspiring stories that will edify the minds of all. Special family memories may be captured in scrapbooks, picture albums, and now more multimedia options to document happy times and epic experiences like births, graduations, weddings, and vacations or holidays where you had a lot of interesting things occur and fun and discoveries so that these are indelibly etched in the soul of the family as iconic victories. Often these are highlighted during one's life review for God and the great masters of wisdom, including the karmic board, enjoy having us re-experience the best of times and the most sublime memories 
where we have shared true love, true light, and true joy. So capturing these in some way, maybe photographing or videotaping and then framing a great photograph and placing it in a prominent place in your home and allowing the memories to be returned to through these multimedia options so that it will foster a greater unity, a greater harmony, a greater peace, a greater divine progress toward healing other communities and other families. Because where there is a spirit of truth and honor and integrity in one family, there is a vibration that goes forth from that aura of that family to bless others in proximity to that family. People will pick up on it. And when you come together and go to church or synagogue or temple and you sit in one pew or you sit together and people see that example and they see how you are one unit, imagine the impression it leaves, how that is etched upon the souls of others and they desire to do likewise. If you never go to church, you never worship God, maybe you do it in a different way, fine. Yet, I have the experience of our family going to church every Sunday, sitting in one pew. We took up the entire pew. <laughs> and it was pretty amazing. There is a Lewis family again. It was an amazing thing to experience. None of us were perfect, obviously, yet we did this together as a unit. And it was a blessing for us and a blessing for that church and that community for us to be there as well as many other families. If there is time, please share now what types of experiences you consider to be those that help build a greater Aquarian culture upon earth, person by person, family by family, community by community. So we don't have much time, maybe five minutes. If anyone would like to share something, you've got like 30 seconds because that's all we'll have time for if we have 10 or 12 people share. So would anybody like to say something about what types of experiences you consider to be those that help build a greater Aquarian culture upon Earth? Okay, so Christopher. Um, sharing and reading with my son Ryan. Um, we enjoy reading the Godfrey Ray King books together, and uh, very blessed to be reading that. We're on the I Am Discourses now, and uh, also, f of course, <clears throat> the prayers uh, that I've learned from David's book, specifically the one with the gentleman meditating on the cover. That was one of the first books I bought from David, and uh, Crystal Diamond Tube of Light, Opening Invocation for Prayer Services, all those I've have I have memorized by heart. Thank God, uh, there are a lot of words to these certain prayers, and I I say them when my son walks next to me when we're walking our four miles. So I have these prayers memorized, and he says them with me, and uh, we go back and forth. But for now, I mostly say them, and uh, he just enjoys the vibration as we walk. So I feel that is very necessary for this Aquarian age: praying, reading, meditating and just being together, uh, even if it's in silence, because the vibration is there, as long as you're living in harmony and forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. You made my day. <laughs> thank you, Beautiful, thank you. beautiful. Ryan, you're amazing. So how old are you, 15? Um, I'm 16 now. 16, okay. You, gra you graduated to one more year. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Florida. We have some online. Go ahead, Boyd. Lupita says that they share meals together. These are some of the folks there. Nancy Locke says, hikes in nature together. Lisa Delaney says, cooking and sharing family meals and holidays. And uh, Marina, I guess this is Marina in Mexico, says, um, we share diplomas and awards and family members that the family members have. Like graduations. Yeah. 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 Uh, Anna Marie, I think in uh, Spain, says, once a day we have a family love and hugs moment. Wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, Moika says they spend time together with their kids in nature. 
Monica, I'm sorry, Monica. Beautiful. Uh, Geraldine says, cooking and being in the kitchen and reading together and dancing together, bring them out in nature with the dogs and the horses. Awesome. And Gloria said, uh, actually she says, Cynthia says that her daughter has such wisdom, sometimes she believes she is the one that puts her in her place. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And she leaves me speechless. Maria Min says, singing together. Beautiful. And uh, I can say for our Batten family, we, we have a Batten family treasure map with uh, quadrants, and each, each of us four have a, a section on it. And we have a, a family motto. And I can guarantee you, if you ask our kids what the family motto is, they know it. They all know it. It is. Nancy and you can say it together. One, two, three. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention. Wow. Okay. Those were all absolutely wonderful, and it's just amazing. So any final quick ones? Okay. Terry's coming to a mic. When we come together uh, at holidays, our family plays categories together, and that's like a, a big... Uh, competition and also a love fest at the same time and when we were our children were growing up we had a family mission and vision statement that we still have now and um, one time we made a calendar uh, a wall calendar with all the pictures of different times of the year on the wall calendar Wow! so that we could like remember the memories of childhood beautiful beautiful thank you so St. Germain would just like to put the capstone on the sharing by saying all of this is how you become a holy family a holy family we think of the holy family as Jesus Mary and Joseph or now the extended holy family with Magda and maybe St. Germain's twin flame Portia or Jesus other siblings and maybe with grandmother Anna and Joachim yet we can all have holy families. All of us can have holy families. And these are the things that engender that and build the Aquarian Age. 